I know what happens at the end of this song. And if you have watched this video of Jenny and Screech and Violet's tail yourself, you know what happens at the end of this song. So let's not pretend that either of us are blind to what happens at the end of this song. Nevertheless, as I watched it, this is probably a few weeks ago, I noticed that there were lots of themes and lots of things to pick up on. And so I decided I'm going to make two videos. The first video is going to be almost like a, a, a reaction video. I'm just going to basically tell you these are the things that are popping into my head. And then after this video, I'm going to make an analysis video where I try to bring together some of those things that have popped into my head. Now, I'm literally going to be making notes. I'm going to be making notes about the things that are popping into my head because I want to use them later when it comes to an analysis. Uh, maybe you might want to do the same. Maybe you might want to just write down the things that pop into your head. Like if you've had the experience of watching this video and thought, wow, there's something to this. Ask yourself why. Why is there something to do? What is it about this particular video, this particular story that Ren tells that lands so well with you? That's essentially what I'm going to uh, do today. Right, so we're going to get started. Let's go. Right, the medieval guitar. Let me just say, I'm all for it. I love the way the Ren plays guitar across most of his songs. It's proper cool. I don't know how he, he manages to make this type of music cool. Second thing, the other thing that's popping out to me is, look where he is. He's in a rundown area, graffiti all over the place. This is like jumping out. It's like real world, real world, world, real world. And then look how he's dressed. He's dressed as like, you know, a, a, a hoodlum. Uh, a, a youth, a troubled youth, you know, he's dressed in that way. And I sort of like I'm asking myself, why? Why is Ren dressed like that? I wonder. Let's go. <laughs> It was a quiet, dark night in an empty street Somewhere at London City Jenny walked alone, she was dragging her feet She was heading back home to sleep Well, she knew this town, she knew this floor Because she walked it about a thousand times before She wanted to escape Can you play? Okay, at this point, this is what's popping into my head London, why are we in London? Is there something about London with regards to this song? That's something to keep an eye out Two, why did Jenny want to escape? We have this character, Jenny. She's walked these roads a thousand times before. We don't know why she's walked them at the moment. Maybe this is just like her way to work or something. So why was she walking these roads and why did she want to escape? Okay, those are the things that are in my mind. We're on the very same night in a different place. That what this hooded Look what he did there, right? He started looking right at a camera with like these crazy eyes. And you can see now he's like going to be talking about someone, someone else who I assume is, uh, is Screech. There walked this hooded young youth by the name of James. By the name of James, he was 14 years old. And out of his brain, he'd be smoking ganja with a boy. Well, okay, he's 14 years old. He's been smoking ganja. He's been doing drugs. James, he grew up to be a kid of the street. His mates called him Screech. He was quick. Okay, so we got a streetwise kid called James, also called Screech. Been smoking ganja. See, he was a liar, a thief, a fourteen years old. The devil had set his sights on his soul. Right, liar, thief, a person of questionable character, is what I'm going to put down now. Person of questionable character. But immediately I'm thinking, hmm, how? How did he become a person of questionable character? See, the thing is, is that character is often people interact with the idea of character as if it's within someone, as if they, 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 that's how they are and there's nothing that can be done about it. They were always meant to be this person. And as soon as we 
place character within someone, we forget about context. And that's all I'm interested in. This guy called Screech, he's 14 years old. He's been smoking with his mates. He's streetwise. He's a thief. He's a liar. How did that happen? That's what I want to know. How did Screech become Screech? As Jenny walked home all along, she felt scared. Usually she was all right, but it was like there was something in the air. A divine intervention telling her to beware, maybe intuition bogging her and making her so scared. Sirens That's funny, isn't it? That, like, sense of impending... Not doom, but, like, the, that feeling that we sometimes get. I think something bad's going to happen here. Isn't that weird? What a feeling that is for human beings. Like, how does that even happen? You know, like sometimes where you'll have a dream about someone you haven't seen for years and the next day you'll see them. And you're just like, how does that happen? I feel like there's so much of the human experience that we can't explain. In the distance at the beat of Jenny's feet. A symphony of the night that echoes crime on London streets. Jenny turns a corner, their eyes they meet. Our poor girl Jenny, a boy named Screech. Give me all your money, bitch, give it to me. If you cooperate, then you'll soon be free. I want your purse, your phone, don't fucking look at me. I mean it, bitch, are you listening to me? Jenny freezes that. It's violent, isn't it? Like the, the way that he's singing, the words that he's using, they're violent. They're violent, they're aggressive. And of course, you've got to ask yourself, why? Why is, it, why is he using this sort of language? And it's because he wants to paint a vivid picture. That's what's going on here, right? This is care Everything that Ren does is carefully chosen. He wants to paint a vivid picture of this scene that is happening between Jenny and Screech. She like a lady shakes stalactite Feel like liquid nitrogen in the dark night She tried to find strength to move But stayed as still as a statue in high heeled shoes All right. Um, okay, so Jenny stays still when this happened that's not beyond the realms of possibility like people always think when they're in this situation they would like run or they would fight actually a much more common way of dealing with this is freezing or even fawning you know like almost like playing possum or, or dissociating what the hell are you playing now? You playing games with me? I swear to fucking God, I'll slice the rosy off your cheeks. You think I don't mean it, go? You don't know me. The last thing you see will be a boy called Screech Reach with the sheep that the blade with the teeth that could bite through steel and slice concrete. And he swung possessed with the devil in his chest and the statue she was turned to butter in her breath. It was a quiet dark night in an empty street somewhere at London City. Jenny lay still on the cold concrete. She's found somewhere to sleep. Well, she knew this town, she knew this floor, cause she'd walked it about a thousand times before. I guess that she escaped. It's such a shame. All right, so we're at the end of part one. Um, the other things that popped out to me there were the idea of knife crime, uh, knife crime in London, and maybe the, the idea that we're sort of desensitized to it. We read stories all the time about these sort of things and we just get on with our day. And also I noticed in me sort of uh, a feeling of sadness, uh, a feeling of sadness for, uh, for Jenny. And the way that Ren painted the scene made me feel empathy, made me feel her fear. Um, which makes me feel sad for Jenny, even though obviously she's a fictional character in a song. Right, I'm going to um, watch part two now, which I think is Screech's Tale. I'm going to turn the camera off, turn it back on, because otherwise it's going to jump, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. All right, we're back. Screech's Tale. I've got to turn my page over, so I'm scribbling down too many notes. Let's go. more of this beautiful guitar playing. I'll tell you a story, I started learning guitar about three years ago, self-taught. It's so hard, the fact he can do this, oh my geez. It's such talent. Ah, oh, come on. Awesome videos. Check out Adverts, I'm making a YouTube video here, all right.
This, I'm not sure what he's doing with the guitar here, but it lends itself so well to the idea of a tale, the idea of a story, doesn't it? This like bouncy feel in the in the guitar. This screech, dear boy, where did he go? He melted into the black night just like snow. Patrick, man, let me in, please open the door. I think I fucked up Patrick, really fucked up, man. I'm not sure. I got crazy, left this lady lying still. The music, it matches so well with what with what's actually going on in the story and the words that Ren's using. The floor, I think I killed a Patrick, come on man, I can't knock no more. But Screech kept on knocking till his knuckles became sore. But there's no sign of Patrick down at number 54. No refuge for our villain, for the bitter hands of fate. With something far more sinister in mind, it does away. So a couple of things popping out to me. One is... Um, imagine he's 14 years old, this kid. He'd been smoking ganja with his mates. He probably made an impromptu decision to to rob someone. Um, and it went badly wrong. And now he finds himself panicking afterwards. Like That's sort of like an extreme, right? But that sort of principle, that sort of idea, I think I see this a lot in everyday life, which is people, they go out on a weekend, they, they, they drink, and then they make mistakes afterwards. Like it's a real human, a real, real thing that happens to us, isn't it? Like we all sort of like make mistakes and then afterwards we panic about how much we've messed up and it seems the Screech is in this position now. I also want to point out like this, there's a softness here. There's a softness here to Screech in the way that Ren is talking about him. He uses the word dear boy and then he says our villain, our villain. Our villain in this tale, in the dear boy Screech. And I just wonder, like, why, why that is. What, what's this? What's this softness like? This guy has done something horrific. Why the softness? Why I'm gonna write that down. Why the softness? All right. The acting's great, isn't it? Hey, babe, are you in? Now nothing really. I'm just a bit tired. Listen, can I swing? around yours for a few moments. I just really miss you, babe. What the fuck do you mean you're busy? You fucking bitch, for fuck's sakes! Like, it's so violent, isn't it? But it's, this is panic, right? This is like person right on the edge that can be tipped over the edge really, really easily, such as this high state of stress the Screech is in. Siren sounds approaching like a banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife. But Screech was never one to run, not one to miss a fight. One hand upon his blade, he turned to face the blue light. That's like street code, isn't it, a little bit? Like the place where I grew up wasn't, uh, you know, it was a little, little bit rough, uh, definitely working class and stuff. And there was like, you didn't run from a fight in, in that place. There's sort of like an honor to face in. Um, to face in the things that might obliterate us. Come on then, you fucking cunts, let's fucking have you then. I am Screech, I'm the boss, I'm the ender of men. You think that uniform you're wearing means that you own these streets? These are my fucking streets, and they call me fucking Screech. Right, so on the one hand, Screech has lost it here, right? On the other hand, if you see street fights, this sort of thing happens all the time, as in, like, if you really want to intimidate someone in a, scre in, in, in a street fight, just look crazy. Look like you are never going to back down whatever happens and you are willing to go to lengths that nobody else would go to. That's essentially what he's doing. It's like he's, he's sending a message to the people that are seeing him, but he's also gearing himself up for this, for this uh, confrontation. Richard was an officer who stood at six foot three, working London on the night shift, what he didn't think he'd see. Maybe there's also delusions there with Screech you know, when he's saying, I own these streets and whatnot. Maybe there's like deluded ideas about who he is and, and how tough he is. Sometimes you see that with uh, with young lads, especially they think that they're untouchable and it turns out they're not. 
was a boy running at him like an animal possessed. With no time to hesitate, he fired four bullets at Screech's chest. Ah, story it ends right at the start. Young Screech and poor Jenny lying one street apart. An officer shaken by the boy that he claimed. The storytelling is amazing, isn't it? Two bodies lay lifeless. And it's such a shame It's such a shame All right, we're at the end of part two. So we've had uh, Jenny's tale, we've had Screech's tale. We know that there are these characters, Jenny and Screech, that have come together in this altercation. We know a little bit more about Screech's background, but I still sort of want to know how he became the kids that uh, the kid that he became. Um, and some and some themes are, are popping out to me that I'll come to afterwards. For now, I'm going to stop the camera, start it again, and we're going to go on to the last part. All right, we're back. Part three. Let's go. It's so cool, the guitar, isn't it? I can do that, no problem. Easy. Oh. London City, far from pretty. We're back in London. All right, why London? Two, zero, zero. And why is it far from pretty? What has happened here? Five, a lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. Rhythmic beeps and blood stains. She's our lady weep. She's tired and frail. To set the scene, we must rewind the hands of time for Violet's tale. Violet was a silent girl, grew up with violent starts. Her mother was a drinker and her father was a bastard. Every night he took a tie but never left the room. I'll spare you of the things he did, I'm sure her mother knew. Violet was a silent. I wonder what came first. I wonder what came first. Did the violence come first or did the silence come first? If, I, if you said to me, right, you got to bet your mortgage on one of those. I would bet quite heavily that the violence came first, and that informs Violet's silence. Girl, she moved out at 16, a semi-detached council flat, paid for by a welfare scheme, packing shelves at Tesco, stacking jars like pickles. Alright, so life's tough for Violet.
bricks. She met a boy named Stevie and he was a little prick. Violet was a silent girl and Violet she fell. Violet fell fast for Stevie. She fell, she fell in love fast for Stevie. Why is that? Something to do with trauma. Trauma and attachment when we're younger, I think, makes us crave for uh, relationships and see good relationships when they're not there. Fast. See, Stevie was the wrong and the Asian knew how to charm her. Every night he took a tie but never left the room. History repeats itself, he paint her black and blue. So you're seeing sort of almost like generational trauma here. Which is interesting. There's some interesting research on generational tra trauma and epigenetics as well. I'll, I'll talk to you about that in the analysis. She never stood a chance. The devil comes to dance. Violet, why are you always so quiet? On her bedroom door and he's irate. He's been drinking and smoking, he's up late. And he stands by her bedside, she shakes. But her eyes stay shut. You fucking slut, I know you're... Like, why is he using that language? Do you think he's using that language to upset people? No. He's using the language to, to for it to be vivid. To give an insight into the scene, yeah, but into the idea that this stuff happens and we look away from it. It happens like this and we look away from it. Domestic violence. Up and he pinches her eyelids and folds them up. Violet. Why are you lying to me, Violet? She stays silent. Things turn violent. That's the sound of his fist when they fall like a crashing pilot. Hit like hailstones. Like he's using violence as a way to raise awareness. It's brilliant. It's a, it's a, it's a, br it's a brilliant way of, of, like, it would upset me if people heard this and go, like, oh, it's such a violent and aggressive song that it's going to spread aggression throughout the men of society. No, it's like, this is aiming to do the exact opposite. It's aiming to raise awareness of what it actually is. To the collarbone, full force, full blown, blood's black bone, crack, knick, knack, paddy, whack, one to the jaw and the tooth spat, detached, fist connects and disconnects a bone. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow, but nonetheless, his punches met her throat. Such a mess, he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar, Violet? Do you think I want to do this, Violet? In character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet. Silence. Fucking say something, Violet. Silence. Wait. Say something, Violet. Isn't it interesting that this is mirrors Screech, doesn't it? What's the relationship between Screech and Steve? As in, they've both done something, gone too far with it, with their aggressive tendencies, and now they're realizing their mistake. Not one word, she stays quiet. London City, far from pretty, London. 2005. A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. The doctor, in a state of shock, saw something here so very wrong. See, Violet, she was pregnant. Poor Violet. She was nine months gone. Turning to the doctor, Violet broke her silence and she cried. If I'm to die right here tonight, please let my baby... Isn't that amazing? I feel as though a mother's love is uh, one of the strongest reasons or motivators for for behavior and for sort of like astounding behavior in human beings. And here she is in a right state. And this is what is going through her mind, which is look after my baby. Baby, stay alive. The doctor soon regained composure, called the surgeon to come in. As Violet's world turned to black, the curtains closed, the lights went dim in London City. Far from pretty, 2005. A lady down in Paddington just lost the fight to stay alive. A tragedy 
or miracle It happened on these very streets Two twins aligned side by side A girl named Jenny And a boy named Screech And so, I'm assuming you knew that was coming, just like I knew that was coming. That was like the major thing that I took. The major thing I remembered from when I watched this a few weeks ago. Um, I think there's loads of themes there. Like, one might wonder, sort of like, how did twins find themselves one street apart? Well, if they both grew up in a similar area, they were likely to bump into each other at some point. But maybe some people might be looking at twin intuition um, there. I would be looking at luck. You know, maybe if Violet had uh, left work five minutes before or five minutes afterwards this wouldn't have happened and I think that luck dictates so much of what happens to us as human beings we want to control everything and yet like a lot of the stuff that happens to us is totally out of our control I think there's like themes in there about response to trauma and also uh, intergenerational trauma I think there's themes there about desensitization to violence um, and but I think that the biggest theme there for me is um, when we found out that Jenny and Screech came from that history of abuse and Screech became the person he became, I think it gave us an insight into how he became the person he became. And I think that when we know that history, when we know that Screech came from a history, he's easier to have compassion for. I think that was the softness that I saw in the song towards Screech. I think that's something else that I'm going to discuss in my analysis. For now, I'm going to say goodbye. Subscribe, like the video and stuff. And uh, if you're interested, then go and watch the analysis, which is probably only going to be like five or more minutes uh, long. Thanks loads for, uh, for watching as always, and I'll uh, see you next time.